three, two, one. Whoa, it did it, yes! I set out to answer the question, can you dice a tennis ball with a racket if the ball moves fast enough? I'm talking fry press, I'm talking slap chop, I'm talking little bitty slices all from getting hit with a racket. But in order to do that, it required me building custom rackets where I replaced the strings with either special razor blades or music wire. And if those didn't cut it, I had made a beefed up racket entirely out of steel. Also, today you'll get to see an air cannon firing tennis balls at 500 miles an hour, tennis balls doing things I thought I would never see, the world's fastest way to cut french fries, and exploding watermelons. But before we get there, we need to understand the problems I had to solve along the way. Starting by seeing how an off-the-shelf racket handles a tennis ball going three quarters the speed of sound. Holy crap, yeah! Right through! Look at how it deformed the frame! Dude, that is absolutely nuts. This frame was in front of this bar. Look how twisted this thing is. This is ridiculous. How's the ball look? Uh, it's just paint. Excellent, that's just what I wanted to see. Considering the world record serve speed is 157 miles an hour and rackets don't bend like this in normal use, the ball must have had a ton of energy. Before I start building anything, I wanna kind of wrap my head around how hard it'll be to cut the ball. Tennis balls can compress a ton before they pop. They're super elastic. So I'm worried that it might just bounce off whatever solution I come up with. My friend Alec bets that I can cut through the tennis ball with this sword. And if this works, then I'll have high hopes for the razor racket. Sorry. I just nailed that ball into my neighbor's patio. I win, Alec. What I've been calling razor blades so far is actually called steel rule. They're made to be bent into any shape and used for die cutting. The steel rule I bought was thicker than I wanted and so I wasn't sure that it would cut through the balls easily. However, the extra thickness made it so I was comfortable cutting a lap joint halfway through the width and it'd still be pretty strong. I built several sizes of grids of razor blades, from smaller grids to larger grids. To get an idea how strong the music wire was, I tested its tensile strength by stretching it until it broke under a crane scale. I found that for the same diameter, steel music wire was eight times stronger than normal tennis string. And to hold the razor blades and music wire in place, I spent two days making a butt ton of clamp blocks to mount them to the tennis rackets. And then of course, I had to make a steel stand to hold the rackets using one of my favorite tools, the Rhino Cart, which is why this video is sponsored by Stronghand Tools. I use this welding table for literally every project. It makes building things super accurate and efficient. Having this table and a bunch of their clamps allows me to solve problems in ways I wasn't able to before. Make sure to check out Stronghand Tools for one of these bad boys. After making some super custom tennis rackets, I had to try them out with a handheld test to see if they had any chance of working. I've never played tennis in my life. 30 thou music wire. Looks like it's stretched out a couple wires. Broke a couple strings. This is razors and composite racket. Since swinging the rackets by hand didn't even leave marks on the ball, I decided I needed more velocity, like a ton more. So I set out to build an air cannon, and after the first design turned out to be Three, pretty wimpy, two, I started from scratch on a bigger one. I wanted all of the fittings downstream of the chamber to be the same diameter as the barrel so that I had the most flow possible. The second cannon has a better chamber to barrel volume ratio, a proper fitting barrel, and I replace a solenoid valve with a burst disc. The name of the game with air cannons is releasing as much pressure and volume as possible as fast as possible. A burst disc, in my case, is a film of plastic that seals in between the pressure chamber and the barrel. And compared to a burst disc, a solenoid valve is kind of restricting and not as fast acting. This isn't an actual burst disc, it's not rated for anything. It's just a film of plastic with a piece of nichrome wire taped to it. This high resistance wire heats up and burns a hole in the plastic, making it rupture very rapidly. But this brings up an interesting point. How do you run wires into a pressurized tank and not have it leak? I thought about using a spark plug, but then I looked closer at Smarter Every Day's cannon and noticed he used a little brass fitting. And so I found a cord grip made for submerging underwater. This isn't actually rated for air pressure, but it worked great. 
The reason I pull a vacuum in the barrel is mainly because it eliminates any drag the ball would encounter from air. But also, it increases the pressure differential behind the ball, which equals more power. This project is by far my most ambitious to date. I'm always pushing myself to learn new things and realizing every day that I'm more capable than I previously thought. And I want you to experience what I have in realizing what you're capable of too. I'm doing things that I would have never thought I would do at least this early in my life. And that's the whole goal with this channel, to inspire you to challenge yourself, to learn new things and show that you're more capable than you think you are. And with that, let's get out to the field and shred some tennis balls. The first time I tested the cannon, I made a very approximate measurement measurement of the ball's velocity. I only had this one frame of high-speed footage to measure from, and so I used the length of the blur to find the distance, I used the shutter speed of the camera to measure the time, and that gave me about 400 miles an hour conservatively. So at this point, I just needed to verify that. Eh, we're about minus 10 inches of mercury, not the best vacuum I've pulled. I think I've burned up. Jeez! So the math tells me it's 645.8 feet per second, 440 miles an hour, holy crap. That was only with a partial vacuum, that's excellent. Wait, 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 wait. I did my math wrong. Once I got home, I re-verified the velocity and found that it was actually 560 miles an hour. That's Mach 0.75. That's almost the same as the cruise speed for a Boeing 737. I did try a chronograph, but it didn't turn out so well. To record this slow-mo safely, I first had to solve a problem with my camera. The way most high-speed cameras work is you start recording, the exciting thing happens, and then you hit the record button again to write the last three seconds of footage to the card. I need to operate it from a safe distance, but none of the off-the-shelf remotes operate the video function. They only take still images. So I made a mechanical solution for something that's normally solved with electronics. It's basically a custom 30-foot long brake cable that pulls a Delrin finger. Before I tested the music wire rackets against the air cannon, I didn't have high hopes that they would cut the ball. It's a trade-off between having thick enough wires and enough wires to not break, but not have too much surface area contacting the ball. Okay, this is 30 thou music wire. It'll either just snap them or pull, pull it out of the fasteners and just yank them. Yeah, I think the wires are just gonna snap. Firing in three, two, one. No way! It went through the plywood? Is that right? It went through the same hole? That's gnarly. Okay, so it broke one and two wires, so it must have hit right on that intersection. That's amazing. The racket doesn't appear to be deformed at all. That's gotta be a cut from the wire. And then I went on to test the thicker wire. All right. Oh, there goes the vacuum. All right, the vacuum just went, but we're gonna go for it. This is 40 thousandths music wire in three, two, one. Oh my God, it gets me every time. What is going on here? That's crazy. So it looks like it hit at least three wires at once. It didn't really pull through the uh, tensioning screws. How's the ball look? Is it still pressurized? Yeah, it's still pressurized. Really? This device here you see is called the laser bore sight. It's normally used for sighting in guns, but I 3D printed a custom bushing to aim the cannon perfectly. Similar to my prediction for the music wire, I was figuring there would be too much surface area contacting the ball to cut it. Like a balloon on a bed of nails. I was thinking the ball would get mangled and stick inside the razor grid, or bounce off like the handheld test. But if it did somehow cut it, I was thinking the ball would get hung up on the intersections of the razor blades. I gave the razor racket about a 10% chance of working. Three, two, one. Whoa! It did it! Yes! No freaking way! I can't believe my eyes. It's so cool. I can't believe my eyeballs. It's so, like, perfect. Hot diggity, man. That could not have gone any better. Oh my gosh. It literally... This is a success. We diced a tennis you ball. Dice. Oh, no way! Yeah. What? What? Oh 
my gosh. I didn't even know what to do. Like, like I totally, way. yeah, I totally expected this to not work and just stick onto the razors. Because this worked so well, I didn't end up needing the other razor grid setups. Dude, it, oh like, my God. it like stayed as a ball, as a clump <laughs> all the way through. This is the coolest thing I've ever done. That absolutely blew my mind. And that was with the racket I thought would be the toughest. Now we just gotta try it with two balls. So the question is, how will they behave when they come out of the barrel? I think they're both gonna be touching each other up until they hit the razors. I think they're both gonna go through the razors. Two tennis balls versus razor racket in three, two, one. Dude, they both went through. That was nuts. I can't believe two went through, but now I'm confident that it could take probably three or four maybe? Such a clean cut. This blows my mind. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's really, whoa. Once we really saw how powerful the cannon was, we couldn't stop there. It was time to test not one, not two, but three tennis balls. Three tennis balls versus razor racket in three, two, one. The reason I jump so bad when firing the cannon is because the wire takes a while to heat up and burn through the plastic. Dang, these wires are getting really hot. Oh my gosh! If you wanna own a piece of this exciting experiment, I'm selling four signed razor rackets, a bunch of tennis ball slices, and some signed burst discs. This is the only time I've sold things used in a video or merch. Actually, I've never sold anything I've made. There's not many, so use the link in the description to check them out before they're gone. I'm shocked the regular racket frames held up because I even made a solid steel welded one. With the experiment over, we were feeling hungry and thought some really fast food was in order. <laughs> Perfect french fry maker. They like stick fries? Perfect. Like nothing touched it. So if any of you burger chains out there are looking for a super fast and innovative way to cut french fries, I'm your guy. And in case you also want to build a steel tennis racket from scratch, this video is sponsored by Online Metals. They're a great online resource for buying metals and plastics, and they have several locations across the US. I've used them for many of my past projects, including the knife gun, the home run machine, and the blast shield. Make sure to check out Online Metals for your next project. And of course, I had to see what a 500 mile an hour tennis ball would do to a watermelon. Big thank you to my friend Robin for letting me use his family's property for this project. That would have hurt. Holy moly, I guess if you have enough velocity, you can cut pretty much anything. If you want to see more ridiculous projects just like this one, you can click this playlist right here, and I'll see you on the next one.